Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul where I'm testing out real visual enhancements which as it says is a zero compromise visual package for real solar system. This is by Sirius and it adds 64k earth terrain, 64k multi-layer clouds and a 64k city light mask which is a lot of space that it takes up and a lot of RAM that it requires and I have 32 gigs of RAM and it is taking up well, basically, I can't do anything more. In fact, uh, I have not got all my normal part mods in. We're, we've got some so that I could test it out. But, yeah, it's a pretty tight fit. And we're going to see how it works out. This is also partly my way of testing out Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. I installed Realism Overhaul in this using CCAM because that's their preferred method now, even though I almost certainly could install it manually. Uh, but I have installed the other mods uh, that uh, were required for real visual enhancements manually. And so its dependencies were Scatterer and Eve Redux, that's env environmental visual enhancements. And then I've also installed the recommended mods, RSS uh, Canaveral HD, as you can see. This is the updated version of Catniscape Canaveral. And I've also got RSS C Canaveral pads, you can sort of see them out there. And uh, we've got Kerbal Constructs required for that. And I did not install Parallax because I don't see how Parallax could possibly be compatible with this without some compatibility mod thing. Uh, I didn't see the uh, real visual enhancements adding anything like that to make Parallax compatible. And Parallax could probably crash the game at this point because it has its own texture packages. Uh, I've got Pood's Deep Star Map Skybox, I've got Planet Shine, got Distant Object Enhancement, and I am using Textures Unlimited FX, TUFX, uh, even though I normally use KS3P. I think I'm probably going to go back to KS3P if it works in KSP 1.12, but we'll take a look at how it works. Now, it's not just Earth, it's got effects on other locations like Mars and all. So let's take a look at the tracking station and see how things look there. I'm a little bit weirded out by the clouds. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if the clouds look right, but maybe that's just here. So the skybox, I might go to Pood's uh, Milky Way skybox instead. This is uh, deep. Uh, this is basically placing dots where the stars are based on the star catalogs, which is an idea, but it's sort of. It doesn't have the charm. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, they're just dots. You know, there's no nebulae or stuff like that. The Milky Way is probably a better bet. Uh, and th there is a Milky Way option from Poon, so we'll just go with that, perhaps. This is uh, the moon. It's I don't think it's been changed. I think that's normal. It's mainly the stuff that has atmospherics, because environmental visual enhancements is mainly about atmospherics. Uh, I won't do the inner planets. I don't know if... Well, maybe I should check out Venus. Um, so, Mars is looking like this. Now, I put in the RSS textures, the normal RSS textures, 16K, uh, because it wasn't clear to me that all the bodies were changed, so I figured that maybe we should have those as well. And so, I thought Mars was looking a little bit different earlier. <laughs> I, I, I've seen it uh, already. Uh, I tested to make sure that this was working, and I swear it looked different, so I don't know. That's weird. Uh, I feel like there's something wrong with Venus. Uh, of course it should be cloudy, but I don't think they should be white clouds, but I'm not sure. Jupiter's looking fine. I'm not sure we were expecting anything different. Um, I think, to a large extent, we really need to visit these things in flight. Uh, on the page for real visual enhancements, it's got some stunning images, but they seem to be like the product of severe post-processing kind of things. So yeah, I don't think just going to them like this is going to work out. I don't, uh, here they don't look very different to me, but you know, my eyes may be deceiving me. Okay, so we, we aren't going to go all the way out there today. We've got to do some basic tests to see whether things are working and whether I can do anything in this with uh, it using so much memory 
and resources. So the first thing we gotta do is try out the Orion carrier plane because it is my standard launcher now. And it'll also allow us to test entry. So here it is. Uh, I just uh, got it in. So uh, we should actually probably launch out of Brownsville. I don't have my Brownsville scenery right now or Boca Chica, whatever. And we'll do the normal trajectory with it and land at Cape Canaveral. So I'm going to change location and do that. So this is simultaneously me testing out a few things. And one thing I noticed right now is it's wiggling on the pad. I'm not used to seeing that. Uh, you can see the array of launch clamps that I have. I don't know if it wants me to have fewer or more. Uh, it's usually pretty rock steady when I bring it out because of all the reinforcement. But yeah, we'll have to think about the physics. So there's testing out real realism overhaul and how that works. I was testing out uh, TUFX, uh, which um, it seems to be doing something different to Star Stage 2 than I'm used to. There's uh, more aliasing on it, and it seems darker as Star Stage 2 than I'm used to. But of, of course, Star Stage 2 has Textures Unlimited on it, so Textures Unlimited FX presumably works well with that. I, I like the look of our, the Orion Carry Plane's body compared to the way it looks in 1.8.1 .1 in the To Mars and Beyond series. So there's that. It's a little bit closer to what I was intending. But all right, it has steadied itself. So SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Now, important, uh, MechJeb by default had it on the better controller, but I did not feel like the better controller was doing better necessarily with this. Um, let's go to the right heading and roll and let's see what it does. And what you'll notice is it's waggling that increasingly. And I'm going to go to the hybrid controller and you see it stops waggling. So the better controller is apparently not better for this. Uh, it might need some tuning anyway. The better controller is better in other circumstances, but not as it so happens right now. So yeah, normally I have fancier Boca Chica scenery, and I will... Uh, that, that, that's not really too intense, it's actually only 100 megabytes. For any given location like that, I, I it just takes about 100 megabytes to make a good job of it. I am going to get more RAM. I have two empty slots. I will soon upgrade to 64 gigabytes. And then we can run real visual enhancements free of concern and with the rest of the parts that I want. Yeah, so that's part of the reason why I'm trying out this and KSP 1.12 now is because I intend to upgrade the RAM. Now, the city lights have been drastically overdone. Um, there's too, met, too much of it uh, at the lower level. In orbit, it's fine. But you can see there's a lot of roads here. There, there actually shouldn't be that many. And I've, uh, it's actually particularly acute around Florida. Florida seems like it's covered in cities. It's not like that. Uh, in orbit, you can see it looks normal, but uh, especially in sort of the mid altitudes, it looks a little bit weird. I decided to test this partly because it is such a sort of refined system. In other words, the the sort of region where it's going to work out right is pretty tight. So if anything has changed about the aerodynamics at all, we'll find out really fast. Okay, let's make sure we shut down. Let, let's say right there. That's probably good enough. All right, RCS on. Okay, we, we usually get a kick, so I'm worried. I should probably move that back. Yeah. Okay. It'll probably take some time for the RCS to orient.
Okay, now we're in space and you can see the terrain there. You can see how little uh, actual city there is over there. It's mostly greenery. And so yeah, I think there's too much city lights there. There's there's Houston for you. You can see the city area, which is correct, up here. But I think the city lights have been placed such that they're covering quite a lot more area. I haven't tried whether this has volumetric clouds. I really would like that for the planes. Uh, it's always nice passing through clouds. That's our trajectory. Uh, the map view. The clouds worry me. Out here, I think the clouds look fine. I saw that there had been some cloud issues, but I'm not clear. They might have been fixed by now. There's something about cloud desync, but I wasn't entirely clear what that meant. I think it means that the cloud layers were not quite working with each other right. I'm not sure what that entails. There's a suspicious ring right there. Listen, when I when I get a package that says no compromise, I'm looking for no compromise, okay? Uh, the coastlines look good, though. That's very important. Overall, the atmospheric effects, I think, are somewhat lacking. I still think that KS3P is probably better, though. I think it's better for the general atmospherics and not so much for the body of the spacecraft. I think maybe TUFX is better for the body of the spacecraft. So that's a complicated issue which one we should optimize for. Now, if you have any other recommendations for mods, this is basically just the real visual enhancements plus realism overhaul plus some of my own parts. No other parts, just my own. Uh, so, if you have any suggestions for things, primarily to make things look better, um, I'll take those. We notice now the sky is uh, entirely black because, of course, we've got the glare from all the light sources. Now we do have Jupiter over there, so that's presumably distant object enhancements working out for us too. Uh, if we wanted to adjust the distant object enhancements, uh, maybe we can turn off dynamic sky dimming. Yeah, now we get those. I guess I'll leave the dynamic sky dimming for now. I don't think there's been a more recent version of Planet Shine, so that might be a problem. It's the vacuum light level. Well, it is working. It's doing stuff. So right now, we can see this controller seems to be having a little bit of trouble turning this properly. It's trying... Um, I mean, I think it's trying its best, probably because it's maxing out the roll. I don't know if the better controller can do more. I do not have atmospheric autopilot in here right now. So, if this actually survives, it's going to be interesting to control after we take it off of Smart ASS. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the hybrid controller because otherwise I'm not being consistent about bringing it into the atmosphere. After all, I used the hybrid controller before. So we should just use it again, for consistency's sake. Try and keep as many of the variables consistent as possible. I had used tweak scale for the landing legs, uh, the landing gear, I mean. And the new version of tweak scale, I'm not entirely sure about. <laughs> so we'll see how that works out. It seems a bit different. The reason I'm concerned about that is not so much for the landing gear functionality, but actually for the mass balance, because landing gear is actually pretty heavy. Okay, we are back in the atmosphere, and you see, uh, you might have seen the transition there. Look how filled with cities Florida is here, compared to how it was in orbit. And I may just try and delete that. I don't know. I don't know if there's some way of, uh, for me to just remove that because it has clearly gone horribly wrong. Okay, crunch time. It's actually using pitch in the opposite direction than I would have expected. Normally, it's struggling to hold the nose up. You can watch the videos with this. Uh, in I mean, I've done a lot of testing with it uh, recently. 
in 1.8.1. Now oscillations. But yeah, it seems like the center mass has shift shifted somehow, or at least the center mass in relation to the center of lift. Also, we're getting overheating on these parts here, the retro rockets. Not critical, because their job is done, but that's a little bit weird. But first bounce up seems to have worked out the way it normally does, except for the, the pitch being used in the opposite direction than I'm used to. In theory, I'm using the exact same version of FAR as I did in 1.8.1. FAR is, not, uh, is the same version for both 1.8.1 and 1.12 right now. Some mods are like that. You can use the same version in both. This is one of the reasons why I haven't updated necessarily, because uh, I, I'm getting the updated version of a lot of the mods, and then some of the mods just don't, I don't think will work right in 1.12. Oh, so it's not my normal runway there. I had placed the runway on Katniss Cape Canaveral in 1.8.1 from the real launch sites pack. This time it's just the one that's baked into the Canaveral sites mod. I need to make some bridges to place over there so that we can connect that up properly. It looks a little bit weird with those bridges not actually extending all the way, huh? Can the brakes work? Oh, the brakes actually work in this version. That's an improvement. Well, I say work. We haven't actually verified that they're producing any more drag than the plane otherwise would. Now we're maxing out pitch the way I normally expect it to, so that's okay. But it does seem a little bit different. We are closer to the cape than in 1.8.1 with this particular version of the carrier plane. Okay, switching to SAS. All right, now it's gonna be interesting. Turning is the interesting part. SAS turns differently than atmospheric autopilot does. Atmospheric autopilot automatically applies the rudder appropriately. Yeah, that's a lot of angle of attack that I'm using right there. Um, we're gonna need to use some of the engines pretty soon. Oh shoot. Okay. Um. Didn't really want to go down there, but that's fine. I'll give it another boost. Since the air brakes are working. Okay, I think I'm gonna need more engine power. Oh, uh, oh no, oh, uh, woo, 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 okay, steady. Oh yeah, uh, hmm, yeah, something has definitely changed. It's feeling iffy now. It's probably not a good sign for landing. Oh, 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 oh. It has gotten aerodynamically unstable. I think... I think the center of mass has... or not the center of mass. The center of lift in relation to the center of mass has moved. The center of lift has moved forward somehow between versions. And so the center of mass is now behind the center of lift. It is what we've got right now as we drain the fuel, the center mass in the plane moves backwards as we drain the fuel. Ah, uh, we were so close, but we're not getting back over there. 
Okay, uh, I, I'm just gonna end this and I'm gonna take a look at in the SPH. Okay, so first it fueled up, it's like that, which is pretty close. Actually, landing gear can be moved forward if that's where everything is. Uh, and then as things straight, okay, that can't be right. I mean, we were stable. I mean, there's no way uh, it was that unstable. No way, uh, it's not reading right at all. Hold on. Oh, the landing gear. See, okay, this is why I'm weirded out by tweak scale. Every time I take a look at it, it's rescaled the landing gear again. So, okay, maybe that's why. Let me set the landing gear scale to where it was before. Okay, well, that's still not helping the image here. Let me hit save. Let's switch editors. This is a little bit weird, but we're going to go one back to the VAB and back to here and see if that resets things. No. Well, that's that's quite a bit more extreme than I was expecting. If that's true, which I I don't really think it is. Hold on, let me reload it. Cuz I just flew it and I know it, it can have been that far off. Oh, it says it's that far off. So, I haven't seen it like this in 1.8.1. I uh, it definitely was not that. Uh, it, it the center of lift remained behind the center of mass as the fuel drain in 1.8.1. And in fact, both were back here. You see where the landing gear is. I placed the landing gear very close to where the center of mass ends up. So the center of mass was here when the fuel is and the propellant is drained. In 1.8.1. This is the location of the center mass. The problem is the center of lift has moved forward. And we can tell that because of where I placed the landing gear. So that's annoying. <laughs> um, how did that happen? I don't know. Um, I did pull some of my other planes in because I figured that they might be useful in taking a look at the Cape Canaveral area. So why don't we? I just got, but they've got locked or invalid parts. Oh, I need advanced, uh, uh, advanced jet engines extended. I need advanced jet engines extended, it looks like. But we can use the F-104 or the Saab Draken or the F-101. Well, let's try the F-104. That's a lot of module sets missing. Um, it's sort of barely flyable, but let's, let's take a look at where everything is. Well, that's nominal. See, that's what I expect. There's something weird about the about the Orion carrier plane. Well, maybe just for this version, I'm have to move things about. But if you are, uh, let me just take a look at the F, uh, the other ones I can open. If there's any discrepancies, that's probably okay. Yeah. So it it really, uh, I mean, it's a little bit far back in this case. I would like it closer, but it's probably acceptable. Yeah. Anyway, we'll test fly the F-104. I haven't seen volumetric clouds. Um, it may be that we don't have those in here. This is different from how I normally pictured a shell landing facility. It's not normally this color, is it? I thought it was normal runway color. I think I might import the real launch sites model of it back in. I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Maybe, maybe this is how it is. Now we again don't have atmospheric autopilot, so we're going to be using SAS, which is going to be fun. I still feel like in the SPH, it's reading the location of the center of lift wrong for the Orion carrier plane. Because just flying it, it didn't seem like it would be that far off. And sometimes it does lie in the SPH when it comes to the center of lift. Uh, this is not going well. Oh, we just lost the engine. <laughs> I can't rotate that much. Uh, boop, boop. Oh, oh no, Jib died. Okay, let's try that again. It looks like it still has a very high takeoff velocity just like it did in 1.8.1. I did put KSP wheel in here. 
to help out with the wheel stuff. I'm just not gonna pull up for a while. I mean, eventually it's like nearly a thrust weight ratio of one, right? <laughs> or something like that. It should be able to. Uh, uh, okay, okay, we're up. Oh, oh, it's it's deviating a lot. I think I need atmospheric autopilot. It's gotta be hard to fly these things otherwise. SAS is not the best for planes. Oh, look, the texture over there is normal. I wonder why this part of the runway looks weird. Very dusty. It's like something went wrong. It's like something went wrong. Oh. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't know if aerodynamics is quite right. <laughs> uh, well, this, this was definitely off kilter quite a lot. I think in a subsequent video I'm going to try things out with Atmospheric Gala Pilot and see if that helps. Um, might want to replace the runway too. I'm not sure. I mean, I like the way they've done it because they've got sort of that fringe there. It's I feel a little bit cleaner on the edges than the shuttle lining facility from relaunch sites, but oh, we're in a flat spin. <laughs> now in this version of Katniss Cape Canaveral, I mean, now uh, Cape Canaveral HD, um, this is solid. It's not water anymore. So, yeah. No splash down there. Okay, right. So, this has been my initial test of a real visual enhancements version 2.0 in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with realism overhaul. And these sorts of discrepancies that I've been noticing with the physics, with the aerodynamics in particular, is partly why I haven't jumped into uh, 1.12 so much, because I don't have to redesign everything. But yeah, we'll try it. We'll try some planes with atmospheric autopilot in a subsequent video and see how that goes. Uh, I'm very suspicious at this point. If you have any recommendations, mainly for visual things, or if you know that parallax in particular can work with a uh, real solar system, uh, then please say so. I'll add it in once I uh, get more RAM in, and we'll see how that works. One thing to note is that the system has paged out a lot of the RAM. Initially it had everything in the RAM, but now it's uh, mostly on the page file. It took about 21 gigabytes of RAM. Now Task Manager is reading 4.5, which means everything else was shoved into the swap file. So that probably doesn't help the whole accuracy thing normally. Anyway, so we'll see going forward whether 1.12 turns out reliable for me somehow. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.